Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Avid Max Tying Tutorials. Today's fly is Amy's Ant. So a lot of materials to this fly, but it's all worth it when it's said and done, because it looks awesome. To start it off, the platform of this fly is going to be the fire hole 718. And then I'm going to use a uni thread, 6 out in black for this fly. The main part of our fly today is foam. We're using the hairline thin foam, 2 millimeter. I'm going to use some tan and some black. For the underbody of the fly, we're going to use some cactus chenille. This is the medium pink color. And then uh, also with some dubbing, some ice dub in red for kind of the thorax region of this fly. I'm going to use some rubber legs. These are the black uh, medium round rubber legs. Along with that, we're going to add some flash. So we're going to use this crystal flash in red. And then a little bit of McFlylon poly post in red as well, just to add some visibility and color to the fly. The main wing of our fly is going to be some bleached elk hair. And we are going to rib out the fly with this Keo hackle in black. So we got our hook on our vise, that nice 718 hook that you've seen us use frequently lately. It's an awesome hook from Firehole Outdoors. And then we're just going to start our thread behind the hook eye there and work on back to where our first tie-in point's gonna be. And I'm gonna go just right about to where that bend starts to go down off the shank of the hook into the gate. So the first material we're gonna tie in is just a little bit of this foam. And you can see I've just cut it a little bit smaller than the hook gate for this fly, the, that extra wide gate on the fire hole. Um, can lead you astray. It's an awesome hook, but you don't want to necessarily measure to that because uh, it might be a little too wide. So I go a little bit smaller than that hook gate for this first material, this foam, and I'm going to just tie it right in on the back of our fly or the back of our hook shank here. It will be the back of our fly and make sure that it's nice and secure there uh, before I kind of pull it forward and bite down on it as I work forward. So we're going to go all the way up to where that hook eye is and bite this material down onto the hook shank. Doesn't have to be pretty, just kind of using this for buoyancy in the underbody of the fly here. So make sure you're keeping it on top. Foam likes to try and sneak around on you. But we want to be nice and square if possible. So once we have the tan foam down and secure, we'll continue to bite into that here in a second. I'm going to bring in the, the black and I cut a strip of this as well and I just cut a little V in it because that'll be the top of the body here. We're going to match that right up with where we tied in the tan and secure it to the hook shank. Just like so. Okay, and then from there, we can come in, just make sure that it's not going to move too much, and add our legs. So I'm using the round rubber legs, these black ones. And I'm going to measure right about the hook shank there, as I usually do, and use that as our midway point to tie these in. And so we'll start with one close to me here. Just make sure they're nice and secure. And then we can come around and do the same thing on my far side, the side closest to you, the viewer. The viewer. And sometimes it can be difficult to trap them on that side, so I'm just going to sneak around and underneath my thread and capture them that way. A lot of material hanging off here, getting in my way, but we'll make it work. There we go. And then I just try and keep those seated right about in the center, in between the foam. I'm nice and level here. So just like so, 
Make sure we're happy with those, and we can jump in front and add our chenille. You know, pink underbody. Traditionally, this is tied in an olive color. You see it most of the time in an olive color, but this is a deadly color combination as well. It's pink with red. Don't know why, but uh, fish really enjoy coming up to slurp it off the top. Probably as much as I enjoy watching them do it. So let's make sure we got that fixed down, clip out a little bit of excess material that we got here and do some cleanup work. Make sure everything's secure and nice and snug. And then the next material we're gonna tie in before we start pulling any of that forward is just a little bit of hackle, Keo hackle in black. So what I'm gonna use on this one, you could do a grizzly. Usually it's a brown in the olive variations. We're just going to secure that, just like we did the chenille, right on the side of the hook shank. You can do it a couple different ways with the hackle, you'll see in a second. I'm going to trim it down, but um, you can leave it long. So if you were going to leave it long, you'd want to measure to have the right, right uh, size hackle. I just kind of picked one that I had laying around um, because that's not, not too important to me the way that we're going to do it here in a second. So we'll bring our thread on up. And we can kind of figure out how far we're going to take that chenille. We want to leave ourselves some room uh, to come back in with some dubbing as well. So pick a point two-thirds of the way up the hook shank and half hitch off there. Well, these legs are still doing what I want them to. I'm going to clip them out a little bit just because they're kind of getting in the way. Shorten them up and then we can bring our chenille. Get our thread out of the way on the bottom cradle here first. All right, so we're gonna wrap our chenille. I'm just gonna bring it on forward, get the legs out of the way as I go. And just make sure that we're covering up all of our underbody there the way we'd like to. And work our way forward. So nice touching wraps just to cover up all that underbody. Right up to where we half hitched. And capture that out. Just like so, clip it. The excess material out of the way. Make sure we're nice and snug here. And then we can half hitch again and bring our hackle on forward in the same method. Except for, we're actually gonna palmer wrap, open palmer this material. So we'll bring it on up and around here and just create some segmentation for this fly. So four or five times. And then capture it off just like we did with the chenille here, same area. Doesn't have to be too pretty. We're going to cover this all up with our dubbing. Just want to make sure it's nice and snug. Secure down. And so this is the part that you might see done differently based on who ties it or, or where you buy your flies from. I think the ones that we sell here at Avid Max, they leave their hackle long. But I'm going to come in and we're just going to trim it down. So the next step is to bring this piece of black foam right over the top. 
And we're going to secure it to the hook shanks and then give ourselves some working room here to do the next few materials. It can be a little cumbersome, just a lot going on with this fly. But the more you do it, the easier it gets, the better it looks, and then confidence you can have fishing it is very great with these, this pattern. Okay, I'm gonna clip out just a little bit of this tan foam, get it out of the way, I don't need it up there anymore. Everything in place. And we're going to add some flash. So the first material we'll tie in up in the thorax region here is just a little bit of this crystal flash in red. This kind of helps pop, helps make the fly pop. And we'll do it all the way up to the front and then I'm going to bring it back and double it over. Just like so. We are, and then the next thing that's going to go on is a little bit of elk hair. I always like to stack it nicely for this, just like you would an elk hair caddis or a stimulator or something like that. Clean out all your extra materials, and then we're going to measure right about to the end of where that body goes, is how long I want it. And we can tie that in right by the tips on top of the foam here. Secure it all down. Just like so. A lot of materials again, but a cool finished product here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of poly posts, just kind of some red material on top that you'd be visible. Detect all those strikes. This fly, just like some of the other foam flies you may have seen us done recently, is a great hopper dropper fly. Just super, super buoyant. So let's see, I'm going to make this material about half and about halfway up the my elk hair wing there. So I'm going to trim it without trimming any elk hair. We can manage. Just like so. There we go. Make sure it's nice and snug, along with all the other materials here. And then we can add our legs, front half legs here, so same material as the back legs, the black round rubber legs. And secure it on this side of the hook shank, right in the middle there, middle of that region we're working on. Do the same thing on this side. Just like so. And clip out that excess material, keep it out of the way. And trim up those legs a little bit more here in a second. Just make sure they're secure. And then we're gonna dub out the thorax, some of this. I stub in red. Nice tight dubby noodle using some wax to help with the picky synthetic fibers. And now we just gotta kinda work around all the materials we got going on here. Dove ourselves a nice little thorax region, kind of clean up all of the thread wraps and hide everything that we had done. 
to get all these materials down. Dubbing also, you can help position your legs. Pull them back, pull them forward, whatever you need to do there. But don't dub them in to your dubbing noodle like that. There we go. So nice bulbous head, what you want to do is work your way down to that hook eye, right behind that hook eye, and make sure you're covering up all the hook shank, all your thread wraps, everything that you've done working towards this point. And then you can come on back. Go right back to where our, our finish point is going to be, towards the center of this fly. Right about like so. So I just kind of use the split where that pink uh, chenille meets the red dubbing. That's going to be our, our finish point. So what we're going to do is pull back the black foam we got laying off there and come right on up and capture it and create a nice head to the Amy's ant here. So nice and snug, give it a couple wraps and then we can trim out the excess and we're going to leave just about well, not too much material there. We're going to come back and trim it into a V, just like we had done on the back end here. So, before we do that, grab my whip finish and finish off the thread. You just got to watch out for all your legs as you're doing this. Kick them out of the way as you might accidentally trap them as you go. Snug our thread down. And we can trim that out on the bottom. Add a little bit of glue, super glue. Make it a little more durable, keep everything in line. And then I'm going to trim my legs out a little bit. Just try and get them even. Might like them shorter, might like them longer, whatever your preference. for your legs there. And then we are going to trim our foam as well. So I'm going to cut that V that I was talking about. Right in the top here. And position your rotary to help you figure out how you want to do that. You can also shape your heads and just kind of square them out a little bit. And the tail in the same fashion. So quite a bit to it. But like I said, when it's all said and done, it's a killer looking fly, both for fish and
fly fishers. Not only does it look great to the fly tire and the fly fisher, but also to those big fish that are ready to eat some terrestrials in the summertime. Here's the finished Amy's Ant. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure to give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us tie in the future, please drop us a comment in the lines below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, be sure to subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you out there.